morning. Uh, I am, any guesses on what I'm gonna be doing today? I am going, I have a pretty light schedule today as far as work goes. So today I'm going to really focus on cleaning this area up while it's mild weather. I think we're gonna have some rain tomorrow. So I'd like to get this area all picked up. I have my really big bee suit. I need to get a, I think this is a large, I need to get a different bee suit because this is just kind of like swallowing me right now. But I'm gonna pick up a lot of limbs. I'm gonna put them in a burn pile. And what I'm gonna try to do is move my middle bee stand out of the way so that we get prepared to move the hives and just kind of clear this area up. I have a lot to do and I was thinking about it and I was telling Buddy, we, <laughs> we have all these projects, but I was like, wait, wait a minute, we have to do them in a specific order because we have to replace that back fence back, back here. Uh, we have to secure it with um, cattle panel and take down the old fence so that we can keep the goats and everything secure back there for our garden. But we also need to move these beehives back there too. But I don't want to move the beehives back there to the fence until we've replaced the fence. And then we can't really cut down the dead trees until the beehives are moved. And we really can't plant the garden when we have to cut down the trees so everything has to be done in a certain order. So today I'm just going to bite off small section at a time and I'm going to clean up this area with all the fallen branches and just do that. And then later on I have got to get my soil in my pots. I have 800 seed pods that I have to start. I've started, I think like 150 of them. So I have a lot more to do today. So that's my two goals. One, clean up this area, move the beehive stands, because the, there's a beehive stand in the middle that's free right here. That's a, it's, a, it's not connected to any of the two beehives. It's just kind of in the middle. So I'm gonna try to move that one out and then fill the soil and the seed pods. Two things, I think I can do it. I'll probably get distracted. Let's be real. Okay. Let's get to it. Even though I'm not gonna be opening up the beehives today, I'm gonna be working like really close to them and I'm and it's kind of an overcast day. The sun's kind of trying to poke out and everything, but the bees really don't like they get, I don't know what it is, but when it's overcast, they're a little bit more cranky. So I actually have a pretty moderate reaction to bee stings. And I'm not like anaphylactic by any means, but when I get stung by bees, it lasts for about two weeks. And the sting, the swelling kind of migrates from wherever my sting is. It'll migrate, like if I get, I got stung on my pinky once and it migrated all the way up my shoulder, the swelling did and it lasted probably about two weeks. Um, around Harvey, I got stung in the head and that was just insult to injury. That was a bad day. Um, my head swole up pretty good. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm, I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm just gonna go ahead and suit up even though I'm working around the bees because I don't wanna get stung and um, have to deal with all that. So anyway, here we go. One stick. You guys want to see the bees? Come look. Let's see if I can set you up. Okay, y'all have fun.
But I've got this tree branch right here. It's actually a dead one just hanging right over this beehive. So a good wind, it's gonna come down, hit the top of that lid, and uh, you never know, it could probably disturb the bees. So I'm gonna attempt to get that out of there without, I don't know, causing a chain reaction of other limbs, I probably will. But the hive that it's sitting right over is like my more aggressive hive. They're not super friendly. Uh, so, and then everything that's kind of left down here, I'm gonna get a rake and just rake it so I don't have to just sit in front of their entrance because it will really make them mad if I'm just hanging out there pulling on stuff and vibrating the ground, they're gonna all come out and be mad at me. So I'm just gonna try and see if I can grab this one limb. Oh. oh, I did it. There's another one in there, but that one's really tangled, so at least this one's not hanging over the beehives anymore. And then I'll show you what I have to move. Next. So I'm going to go grab a rake, and then this is what I'm going to move. I'm sorry if I'm moving around so fast. I'm trying to be better at that. Ooh, those bees are coming out. They're doing their orientation flight. That must mean that the queen is really hatching them off today. So, do you see how... Okay, let's see. There's these cinder blocks and these cinder blocks. This whole area right here is free of this hive here, as well as the other one. So I'm gonna try to remove this whole setup right here and move it to where we're gonna reposition these bees. Ooh. Yep, they're on alert right now. Hey, I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out, bee. Oh, if I could talk to them, I would let them know. Okay, so let me go grab a rake. We should make I'll like a, a special drink hole. Kind of like jeans have a, a zipper for men. I can just see if I can do this. There you <sighs> Buddy and I tried to think of like ways to cool off in here and we got those little fans that you can hang around your neck. Those didn't work very good. One time I forgot to zip this up. That was the last time I forgot to zip that up. It only takes once. All right, come follow me. Okay, I think I've successfully cleaned up this area pretty good. Now I need to move this center stand area, this, this, the center area and I'm gonna just I'm not gonna set it up but I'm gonna reposition it back there uh, where am I at over there I'm gonna reposition it just kind of stack it up and to get it ready for whenever we do move the hive I probably should have not done arm day today at the gym that was uh, not well thought out. Going double duty today. Okay. Y'all see this four by four? 
See how it's got a a lovely char? Yeah? Why don't you ask Lester how that got there? I haven't forgot, Lester. Maybe we should just do a story time. Take a break. So in Lester's defense, okay, he was trying to do me a favor. My fence line along the driveway had a bunch of grass and weeds growing up in it. So he was trying to make it look nice and he thought, hey, I'll just, you know, burn the grass along the fence line. Um, I got a call, I think I was at work, and it was Lester, he's like, look, I'm sorry, the fire got out of control, and honestly, the first thing I thought of was my house. I was like, oh God, please not my house, but he's like, so the wind picked up, but good news, I was able to get it out but I set your uh, backyard on fire. I was like, oh, okay. So then I really got to see the extent of the burn and I was so glad that uh, my bees made it because it, the fire got out of control and went to my beehives, went underneath my beehive stands, scorched my beehive stands like you saw, but didn't scorch the uh, beehives themselves, which Got really, really lucky on that. Uh, Cause that would have been disastrous, but that is the story of how my beehive stands are charred on the bottom. Okay, story time over. See that? Got really lucky. What's that saying? Um, no good deed goes unpunished. That's, that's a pretty good example of that. Trying to do a good deed and inevitably something goes wrong. Okay guys, we did it. Hooray! We moved the six cinder blocks and the three four by fours over to where their new home will be. But before we set the stand up, I need to mow down this grass and I'm gonna put a weed barrier down probably some mulch and I was thinking about doing maybe like a rock border like those landscaping rocks around it so that it's easier for me to mow up against it because um, I don't know if you noticed but my other one we tried to put weed barrier down after the fact and uh, didn't really work too good I would mow over it and it would just like spit rubber pieces everywhere and was not a good time so I'm gonna do it uh, differently this time and hopefully get proactive about grass and weeds growing up around my beehive so anyway good news I did not encounter any snakes I was kind of afraid that moving all those cinder blocks and disturbing the ground like that would reveal some hibernating snakes in the ground but no snakes to be seen. Oh, one chore done, kind of, partially, a little bit. It's okay, one chore's done. That's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna focus on, one chore. Okay, one down. Get your hair right up on the back. How are you gonna try to make it by yourself? I gotta redo the face first. Okay because I don't want to do the things while the bees are right there. Yeah.
Okay, I am done. Look at, it's a little crazy. I'm done with my B chore, and now my onto my second one. My second project. I'm going to fill the rest of my seed pots, and I have 800 of them. Some of them I've already started, but a lot of them I haven't. So basically, how I have it set up right now is, I got these um, these cardboard boxes from Home Depot just let me take them as trash. Sorry, Luna. And I've just lined them with my peat pots and I'm gonna start to fill them with soil. Um, I might just end up dumping the bag of soil on top of them. Cause I think shoveling it individually is going to take a long time. And then I've got these right here that I basically just stacked on plastic lids just for um, storage sake for now but yeah 800 800 of them and I will show you the end result and then once I get them all filled with soil then we're gonna start planting them with seeds and that's gonna be fun so here we go okay we have got all the soil in the starter pods. That's about 800 pods right there. So um, these over here, I've already I've already planted. I've got jalapenos. These are a lot of peppers in here. Um, so this is 72 pods just in this first one right here. And then I've got my zucchini and yellow squash in here. And then zucchini, spaghetti squash, yellow squash. So those back two over here are gonna be squash that I've started. Squash and some peppers. And so everything else I've got to start uh, with seeds, get those, get those going too. So they all kind of start within the same time frame. Okay, on to seeds. Um, I wanted to show you this really cool little tool that I have. Um, it is a tiny seed sower. So you don't have to, like with these tiny, tiny little seeds. Oop, let me see if I can get you in here. Can you see it? I don't know if you can or not, but they're like tiny down in there. It's kind of fuzzy. I am going to just pour these in here. Oh, try to do this with one hand. This seed packet is lemon balm. It's part of my herb garden that I'm gonna start. And then this topper has different size holes that goes on top. And it only allows, like this one's a little tiny one. It has like, it's numbered as well. Gosh, it's so hard to get it in focus, I'm sorry. So the number zero is no seeds can come out. And then the number one is the smallest seed that can come out. So I just basically take it over the soil and tap a few where I need it to go. And that way it's easier than having to um, put, pick them up by hand or pick them up with a tweezer or something like that. I can just tap them and they, they slowly come down the chamber and it's easier to All control. right, I have got almost every tray started and I'm gonna leave this one without seeds um, so I have a few more seed packets that are coming in that I want to do and I'm gonna wait till those come in to fill these up but for now I'm going to mark in my calendar that I have started these and I'll water them and we will wait for them to start sprouting <laughs> 